crunch first there, the yeah. mum. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Come on, man. <laughs> Say hello first. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are reeling at this image of the largest ever albino <gasps> catfish to be caught wow. on a rod and line. Wow. That is, yeah, I know. And you'll be falling hook, line and sinker for this lot today. A lady who's happiest when she's got her hands on a whopper, it's Lisa Maxwell. <laughs> to fish for a compliment. Oh. She is simply Linda Bellingham. <laughs> <laughs> and the nation waits with bated breath. Was her weekend date a good catch? Oh, Let's find good, out later. <laughs> it's Sherry Houston. <laughs> and I'm making sure that the only way is upstream for me today. It's Kate Thornton. <laughs> Two cracking guests for you today, residing in the loose land. She is the consumer queen who's an expert on dishing out advice on how to spot scammers, rogues, and ne'er do wells. Here to give us her tips, she's always welcome. It is this simply wonderful Glory Hannaford. And boy, oh boy, are we happy to see him back on our small screens. From EastEnders to Heartbeat, he was one of the most recognisable TV faces uh, throughout the 80s and the 90s. But where has he been? Where have you been? Thanks, Nick Jordan. Berry, everyone! Yay! Looking good. Looking good. good Nick. Oh, Time has been kind to you, Nick. Yeah. Hey. 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 <laughs> Can't hear anything. <laughs> he looks good, but he's gone a bit mutton loving. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Plus, later on the show, we're going to be getting up close and intimate with Sherry and seeing out how she got on when she went on her date on the Orient Express this weekend with her John. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> what we want to know have the doors to your china cabinet been flung open? <laughs> This way, I've taken the doors off. Oh. It's official, Sherry is unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, the other big romantic uh, engagement this weekend was, of course, the royal wedding of Zara Phillips and England rugby captain Mike Tindall. The unconventional couple married on Saturday in Edinburgh, and there's been much speculation about not only her choice of outfit, but also her decision to hold on to her maiden name. So did the Ooh. almost royal wedding uh, capture your attention this weekend, ladies? Well, Aww. clearly not for Sherry, because she was, you know... She elsewhere, was, yes, elsewhere. Doing DIY with cupboards. <laughs> um, I love Zara Phillips. Yeah. I just there's something about her. She just and even, you know she gets it really wrong with the fashion stuff, doesn't she? Do you think? It's sometimes she's had some disasters, but it doesn't matter because her personality is just brilliant. She just looks like she's having a good time. So um, I didn't love her wedding dress. I thought it oh. was a. Oh, I, I did. I thought it was oh, gorgeous. Oh, turn. <laughs> I just. It was just. I, it was I think simple. She, it was very simple. I liked the fact that it was simple, but I thought it was a little bit mumsy for her because I think she's got a very strong face, an amazing face, fantastic body, and I just. I think she could have been a bit more daring. Oh. Uh, I but, like the fact that she didn't go for the, all the obvious that all the other people dress up as though they're going to a nightclub. Well, and the, of... and the other thing that was nice was she... <laughs> <laughs> Pond life, eh, Lynn? <laughs> um, I think what was really nice was she didn't starve herself for the wedding day as well. You know, like, she didn't do that sort of getting super thin thing that a lot of brides what do. What are you trying to say? No, I thought... She, no, I'm not saying she looked <gasps> big. <laughs> I'm saying she looked like a normal, healthy can girl. I, can I just she looked beautiful. Enough. Can I just put out... She actually lives near Zara Phillips. Good luck. Oh, don't. <laughs> and, uh, do you know, I have, I've seen her in the supermarket. Don't you think, seriously, what, is so love what was so wonderful about it is that she does look like a lovely young wo woman and she's not yeah. stick thin and she wasn't Ooh. dressed up as though she was going to a nightclub with everything hanging out. And actually, it's a great role model well, to a lot of young women who seem to totally you have agree to. that. She's a very good role yeah. model. Like I didn't girl. say she should have it all hanging out. No, no. I said that she just maybe could have been. Classic it, it was. I, know it was I the think you've said enough. <laughs> it, it was Queen's designer, wasn't it? Queen's designer, yeah. the dress. And I think it no, looked like something the no, Queen could have worn. No. Got, it was a design of the Queen's light, but she got it off the rail too, which I thought was fantastic. In a and local I, wedding uh, shop. And I thought that, you know, Did the family. Did you get Zara? <laughs> 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 you really have said enough. And I thought, um, I thought it was quite funny because I thought Beatrice and you, Janie, didn't disappoint, did they? <laughs> no, she goes her own sweet way as ever. Aww. Bless her heart. There's always oh. one at a wedding. <laughs> well, I, I read the other day that Fergie was getting a stylist in. I don't, obviously not. <laughs> well, sorry. 
But you know, bless her heart. Can I have she a saucer of help. milk for Linda Bellingham, please? Thank you. <laughs> I'll give her a few. Do you know what? I loved that wedding at the weekend. I thought it looked like a joyous occasion. It, it was. It yeah. didn't have all oh, of yeah. the formality of Kate and Williams, which obviously they had yeah, to have. Of course. I thought it was. There was as many friends there in attendance as there were members of the family. Um, I love the fact um, that they, you know, the best man, was all kind of. He'd have been in a bit of an accident. Hadn't he? Did you see that? It was all kind of sti he had like stitches. a proper yes. wedding, you mean? Well, yeah. it was like one of the <laughs> It was like something that my family yeah. would say, to be honest with you. I knew you were going to say punch that. up on the stag you line. Can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine, can't you? Philip, do they always fight there? <laughs> <laughs> morning there was a picture of Mike Tyndall on the steps of, of where, wherever they'd had the reception uh, still in the clothes from the day before at two o'clock in the afternoon yeah. <laughs> now that is the kind of wedding absolutely. I go to yeah. I thought it was a lovely wedding and I thought she looked absolutely exactly what you'd expect mm -hmm. just gorgeous a real proper wedding no fuss no mess just and they didn't they look happy yeah are they, they the actually, happiest yeah. couple I thought she'd ever. arrive thought on a horse wonderful <laughs> With that dress, <laughs> don't be yeah, but distressed. she loves her horses, doesn't she? You what? She loves her horses. She does. No, yeah. she does love her horses, but you know what it is? Loves just her so lovely. More, I mean, <laughs> she, how long has she actually been with him? Quite a long oh, time. Eight years, she? I think it is. Eight years. So you know, they just look like that. Do you don't know what they? was? Well, I mean, the big speculation. I don't know if you're watching the news coverage leading up to the event, but there was as much interest in Kate and William as there was in in Mike and Zara. I would have mm. said. <coughs> Do you think that Kate Middleton um, played a blinder by playing it down on the day, not looking to the cameras? They arrived. I mean, they, mm. the photographers, I think, really struggled to get a, a, a shot of her. They went straight in. And didn't I they? and I think you know she almost. Um, made herself not a story by dressing the way that she did. I wasn't a fan, sorry. Oh, I thought oh, she looked absolutely she stunning yeah. and regal and everything. And as you're right, way out of the cameras, not taking any of the limelight, I thought she looked beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So I don't think you can knock her what she wore at all. Really? But I just no. think they all, it was just a lovely was a family lovely wedding. Day, actually, wasn't it? it was a proper it? wedding. The other side of the royal family, really. It's brilliant. And for it's the great royal she's family, keeping her maiden got... name. I think it's really modern, and she's yeah. a professional woman, exactly. and she's, she's renowned she's for her hard sporting. For a name. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard for maiden names. So, I mean, if you called Mrs. Fartbottom, I would understand <laughs> it. <laughs> But uh, oh, if you're called Mrs. Right, Phillips, yeah. Yeah. no. But you know what's so lovely is that you know we've got a role that's that's working. That she's got to keep her working name because yeah, that is yeah. her industry, and that more more power to her. I say. Well, congratulations to the happy couple. And remember, if you've got something to say, don't hold back. Get your views into us today. Uh, you can email us loose.women at itv.com. You can write your thoughts on our Facebook and Twitter sites. And if you get them in by 1:15 uh, on today, Monday, the 1st of August, we could be reading them out for you a little later on. We're going to take a quick break before we catch up with the always glorious Gloria Hunnaford. We're back soon. Welcome back to your Monday Loose Lunch. Now, headlines in several of today's papers have given cause for concern because statistics revealed by the NHS Trust around the country show that youngsters, particularly girls, are becoming increasingly obsessed with their figures. It's been re revealed that children as young as five are being treated in hospital for severe anorexia, with a total of 98 youngsters aged between five and seven having been admitted to hospital during the last three years due to eating disorders normally associated with teenagers and adults. Now... With society's ever-growing obsession with weight and body image, um, do you think that we're all responsible in some way for this growing problem? And, and do you think it, it is a problem that's, that's getting out of control? I think we're all responsible anyway. I mean, I think magazines are responsible. You know, when they look at kids on... or young girls on magazines and they've been airbrushed and they don't look like that at all and then they aspire to be like that and it's just ridiculous. I have to say, I think the actual label and actually putting it on the front of a paper, mm. anorexic kids at five, I think is totally irresponsible and totally dangerous because they call everything anorexic and apart from anything else, it's become a buzzword, hasn't it? Yeah. It's become a badge of honour, like an ASBO. Oh, I just, She's anorexic. It's a very serious illness. And it, though, isn't it? Yes, but you, that's why they shouldn't use it like, likely like that. And with a five year old, they should. You know, there's always been kids with problems with eating. When I was at school, there were kids that were too big or too thin, or, and it was either through bullying or emotional problems at home. 
There's lots of reasons. Just to label to the fair, whole though, thing Sherry, anorexia is ridiculous. To be fair, these are NHS statistics, and this is, an, this is a diagnosis that's been made by a doctor, a fully qualified doctor. So I don't, I'm not so sure that it's a badge that's banded around it. It is, it is a diagnosis. But a five-year-old, an anorexic five-year-old, I'm sorry. It's, it's possible. That's the problem, isn't it? That anorexia is, that is, is the is name of, of the illness. And it, and it, and they it, didn't know about it, 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 did they? I mean, the point is, another one of these illnesses that's come out in the last... 10, 15 years when before yeah. a child might have had difficulty with eating, as now it's anorexia. <laughs> well, it is anorexia. I mean, that is the, that's the name for the condition if someone has a problem, a mental block on eating food. It's, it's, and it's, it's not always about the food, it's about control. It's if you're unhappy about an element of your life, it can manifest itself in you trying to control what you actually put into your body and controlling the way that you look. Anorexia isn't a new thing. I was at stage school and I was in the same class as Bonnie, Langf Bonnie Langford and Lena Zavaroni. Lena Zavaroni was anorexic when she was 11 which is very, very young, uh, but that, that was because of her missing home and being a lonely child, not because she wanted to look a certain way. Having said that, I do think that some of the reality shows that, that our kids are privy to today, like Bose 11, and if she had her way, on telly, she would be watching the Kardashians, Paris Hilton, all these glamorous, perfect women that have lots of money that, that look like everything is where it should be. And... I'm sure after a while, when you see enough of this, you start to think, well, I can change the way I look, I can control the way I look, and it's more about image than it is about somebody being happy, and I, I really think those shows are quite dangerous, not just well, the it, magazines. It starts, I would argue that it starts much, much younger than that, actually, and I think you're right about anore anorexia being about control for me. Uh, as a teenager who went through that, absolutely that was, was what it was about. But Same as me, it in starts, my 20s. It I'll starts with the first doll you're given as a little girl. I mean, if you... If you um, I, I can't give the name of the doll, but I think we know the one that we're talking about. If that, that doll were a human being, uh, she would be dead because those proportions that we, that we <coughs> idolise from, from, you know, the ages of four and five are absolutely impossible to achieve. And, so and now if you look big, at... big breasts, tiny, tiny waist, tiny long waist. legs. But but do you think kids actually take any notice of that? I mean, they pull the arms and legs off them. No, so. but I would, what I would say, <laughs> shows when, when you go through now, if you're a young girl now, you're watching Hannah Montana or, or High School Musical, you don't see anything uh, that, that varies from a, uh, you know, a, when we a were physical up, perfection. Like Double Deckers was my favourite programme, and there was there was a large kid in it, there was a black kid in it. There were there were kids that represented everybody in society. Nowadays, if there's if there's a, a large child, it's often the comedy part. Well, that was always you know, the way. That's always the but way. It, but but what, it shouldn't be that way. No, no but there is also because I get so depressed about this. Bear in mind there are also. Hundreds of young girls and young people who don't get obsessed, who know it's the telly, who know it's pretend. Yeah, but those figures and it's are, Linda, you can't no, no, ignore the, it. I mean, that's quite shocking. No, no, ninety, a thousand between a thousand out of however many millions. What I'm and what I do feel very strongly about is it. Back, we're back to square one again about education, about school, and about food in this country. And and the trouble is, one minute they're to, we're, we're told the world our entire school children are all obese, and I blame it all on the Americans because if we'd followed. It, you know, if we'd followed European culture about our food and the importance of sitting down with a family and it becoming not like not American culture where you have a, a pint of Coke in one hand and a sweet drink burger. and a huge burger in the other hand and that's what you do all day instead of using mealtimes to enjoy, to talk to people, to eat fresh food. And I still don't understand why they did away with school dinners. Why, why, why let children go out and walk around all day buying crisps and sweets That's when they could sit well. down and have a proper balanced they do meal? Linda. It's not they the quality of schools. the food. Well, anorexia is not about no, no, food. No, no, but I'm saying it's, it's an attitude now to, to eating that you have to combat that, that, <coughs> that, those images of, of young girls with thin, 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 with, with how food is in your day-to-day -day life. It's should be not something that you either don't have or stuff down you. It's, there's a balance. Well, we could talk about this for ages because obviously we all have very differing opinions. Do let us know yours. Uh, but right now it's competition time and we're up in the stakes this week with the competition prize uh, that, well... You